and welcome back to the semi-finals the semi-finals of the korean starcraft league week number 37 and we have two amazing players here for you here and now and oh my god i almost forgot predictions will soon be open I i'll i'll get around to it as spawning in the top right hand corner we have the south korean zerg player the red zerg representing dragon kaizi gaming it is dark And spawning in the top left-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the Chinese Terran player, the reigning world champion representing Dragon Kai Z Gaming. It is Oliveira. Here we go. And I will need a moment here to set up those predictions and so that everyone in the chat can get their gamba going, papi. Let's go. <laughs> one moment, one moment. I'll get right you know, Oliveira versus Dark. Okay, upon hearing this message, you have two minutes. Two minutes to place your bets on who you think is going to take this series and advance on to the grand finals of KSL. Unfortunately, we didn't get to go over the bracket. Sorry, I was just um, working with my VPN and trying to fix any issues. And hopefully, if you do notice a little bit more smoothness in the game, that's the reason why. <laughs> and that may have to be the norm because oh, it's looking pretty good not gonna lie it's looking pretty good <laughs> um but uh if you do look at the bracket exclamation mark b in the chat there is another player waiting in the upper semi-finals it is going to be hero hero is waiting for the winner of shin versus classic if this series is fast then we can go over the upper semis as well otherwise we'll go straight for the finals we'll go straight for the grand finals and oh it's it's oh it's smooth it's beautiful shout out to mudfish <laughs> anyway uh, as we are getting ready for this now, fun fact, this is a rematch. This is a rematch from this week's ESL Open Cup Asia. If you were tuning in earlier this week on Monday, then you would have seen us cast Dark versus Oliveira in the quarterfinals of ESL Open Cup Asia, and you would have seen Oliveira win. Oliveira did take down Dark two to one. It went all the way to the ace match, went all the way to game three, but Oliveira did take it. He advanced onto the semifinals where he faced off against Solar in the semis where Solar took down Oliveira. So Solar, he, Solar avenged Dark in the next round, but Oliveira did very well for himself, taking down Dark earlier this week. So Dark is going to be looking for some revenge. That's uh, some quick or some, some quick fun facts uh, if you if I do want to influence your, your voting a little bit. <laughs> now, bearing in mind, though, that what, I'm, what I just mentioned, it did go to the ace match. And fun fact, they did face off on this map on Equilibrium. Now, if you recall, what happened the last time they faced off on this map was Dark went for a very, very dedicated Roach push. He droned up to, I want to say 60. He cut workers at 3-base saturation or just under 3-base saturation, committed to Roaches, went across the map. He broke the third base of Oliveira, killed a bunch of workers. He crippled the economy. And then Oliveira turtled on two bases, took a third, took a fourth, took the gold, cut the map in half, and it, it went for 40 minutes. <laughs> Dark broke the third with a roach rush at like ten, at the 10 minute mark and Oliveira refused to die for another half an hour it was crazy it went the distance went all the way it went to of course to a split map scenario went to the late game eventually uh dark did win dark went broodlord infester uh by the way broodlord infester with a couple of lurkers to support um and eventually out traded Oliveira because dark did have the better economy throughout most of that game just because he had a stronger start Meanwhile, that's a fast layer. <laughs> I'm talking about like, oh, the ultra late game, like Brewlord Infester versus like Tank Thor, Lib Ghost. Um, but that is a layer before four minutes. We are rushing into it. This is looking like potentially a Ling, um, a Ling Queen, Nidus all in. A lot of Lings on the way, Queens as well. No additional gas geysers. So we'll see where Dark takes this. I'm feeling Nidus, but we'll see. Second gas geyser is being taken. No third or fourth gas. Overlord is on the way. Overlord making its way towards the main base intentionally so. Meanwhile, the Cyclones are being caught out. Oh, the first Cyclone does go down. This was a variation from Oliveira. Oh god, the second Cyclone gets caught as well. Instead of going Hellion, he went Cyclone to begin with. He's still going Bio with more Raxes on the way. Um, again, we kind of glossed over that because of the opener. But again, there is that Nidus Worm thrown down. And unfortunately, Oliveira didn't see the fast lair. Otherwise, like ourselves, he would have deduced what was going on. He would have deduced the Link Queen Nidus all in. Alas, he's in the dark, he doesn't know. He does have a uh, vision here in the main base, but already these links are doing so much. We can just go for the Nidus here at the front door. We don't even have to go into the main. We may as well, though. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see where the Nidus gets thrown down, whether it's in the main base or 
at the natural as the Lings, they get a surround once again. They get on top of the Cyclones. One Cyclone goes down, the other is under threat. Show us the Nidus. As the Lings are taking down some of these SCVs, they cannot get on top of that final Cyclone, though it will survive, will hold on. And there it is, Nidus at the front door. And Oliveira doesn't see. He doesn't know. Oh, the Cyclone falls. Not like this. It barely does go down. Lings, they bust into the main base. They're distracting the army. There's barely an army to begin with. Only a handful of Marines. And here come the Queens. GG gets called immediately. And Dark will take game number one. GG. Oh, my God. <laughs> GG, well played, just hyper aggression out of dark. Unfortunately for Oliveira, he lost his Cyclones on the map, he lost his Reaper on the map, and he could not, he was not able to scout his opponent, didn't get to read the fast lair. The fast lair, lack of gases, lack of saturation. Oliveira was in the dark, he didn't know that an all-in was coming. As a result, he wasn't able to prepare in time. He was building up his, his production, he was working on additional Raxes, was caught with his pants down. And just like that, Dark, he gets his revenge. He <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I say get his revenge. Uh, he also won on Equilibrium last time they faced off. But uh, he is one step closer. One step closer to redeeming himself as we're getting into game number two. Pass out. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm catching up with the chat. I was a little bit, a little bit distracted earlier. In Home Story, in Home Story Cup, uh, Cyril did not drop a map. Them did not either. I think they were talking about Australia. DRG seems very shaky on his infestors. Kind of. Like, if you remember, DRG, he had a really strong mid-game against Oliveira. He, he was taking he was killing bases left and right. He was doing really well. He was in a good position. Um, I do think more so than his infestors, because he was finding some good fungals. I do think um something that I mentioned earlier, especially when you're trying to break a def a, a turtling Terran player, um, DRG investing and committing as hard as he did to Ultras and not transitioning out of Ultras. We spoke about at the time it was a very expensive uh, investment and I do think that it was his downfall in a way instead of going into uh, Broodlord Infester. Where that may kind of go into along that that like talking point where maybe he wasn't really, he didn't want to rely too heavily on Infestors which is why he didn't go into Broodlords. Um, but that is a transition that is typically seen at the Ultra late game. Um, and something that we didn't see from DRG, despite him getting ahead. Maybe a little bit overconfident. Regardless, we're getting into game number two and spawning in the top left-hand corner of Oceanborn. We have the South Korean Zerg player representing Dragon Kaizy Gaming, leading the series one to zero. It is dark. And spawning. In the bottom right hand corner, we have his opponent going for a low ground two racks. We have the reigning world champion, the Chinese Terran representing Dragon Kaizy Gaming. It is Oliveira. Regardless, something that we do have to praise in that previous series is Oliveira's tenacity, right? Uh, the fact that he was down in economy, losing bases, down in workers, and taking a big blow to his army as well, losing tanks and just army in general up against the wall. He stood strong. He was able to withstand the aggression, was able to stabilize, was able to fight back. Like, honestly, that was a really amazing comeback from Oliveira in that last game. Really impressive stuff. Um, it's something that we do have to, of course, uh, bring attention to as well. Not just some of the mistakes of DRG, but some of the, um, again, some of the plays of Oliveira. And his ability to just, yeah, survive. <laughs> it's really impressive. As we're getting into this series, of course, again, in that last game, a lot of it did come down to Oliveira's lack of scouting information. Unfortunately, he was just in the dark. Uh, he was being denied. We'll see how much more active he can be here in game number two. Again, with his two racks opener, we're going to be having an abundance of Reapers, and we're looking to contain Dark to two bases for as long as possible. Dark going straight for his third, though. No fear. And that is going to be spotted by Oliveira. And Oliveira should start up an additional wave of Reapers here. As for now, yep, there we go. Additional Reapers are on the way. So, for those wondering, typically your standard two racks opener is three Reapers, but because Oliveira did see the faster hatchery, he's committing into a fourth and should be a fifth Reaper as well. As I say that, Oliveira, he's going for the army, he's not going for that hatchery. Okay, he's gonna be dancing here with the bases, with the middle line. Now he will divert his attention to this hatchery. We have two Reapers, there's a third, and there's the fourth and fifth Reaper on the way. 
And again, we invest into five Reapers just to cancel this base. That's the goal here, to contain to two bases for as long as possible. Link speed just now begins for Dark. It's not going to finish up in time. Dark will lose this hatchery. The Queens are trying to waddle forward. They're Dark. He wants to save it. Can he? Oh, boy. I will see if he can as the Queens, they do move forward. They caught off a creep. No. The Queens. It looks like up. Oh, one of them's going to go down. It looks like we can take down the second queen as well. Lings, they come in to reinforce. Ah, but it's too little, too late. Two queens fall already. Big pick off for Oliveira. The hatchery, less than half HP. Another queen is on the way. Link speed still in production. And it looks like even though the queens went down, they bought enough time. I believe we should save the space. Up. Oh, Reaper went down. We're still on five Reapers. And we're getting another queen, a third queen falls. This is becoming too much. Oh my god, Olivera, calm down. <laughs> As we dive a little bit too far into the natural waste, we're getting surrounded. We barely do escape the clutches of those links. Link speed finishes up in five seconds. We're five seconds away. Can we get another queen before that does happen? And I feel like there's no way out for these Reapers. Yeah, link speed kicks in and they do not get surrounded. Mate. This is... <laughs> Bearing in mind, we got another queen! No shot. We get another queen here. And this is becoming far too much. Back at home, we're transitioning, working on stim, building up the marine count. The reapers finally get cleaned up. And there's a give and take here. One, yes, Dark did save the hatchery. This is true. The, he committed hard here to save the third base, and he did save it. But at what cost? Four queens and 15 lings. This was still worth it for Oliveira. Very much so, especially considering all these, all these things, they can do nothing. We have repair, we have marines, the lings, they, they tickle the wall, but they can't really do much else. And Oliveira, he's in a pretty damn good position from here. How many queens do we have? One! We have one queen right now. Now two. This is all we have. We can't inject, we can barely spread creep. Oh wait, no, we, we, made, an, we made an entire wave of queens at the same time. Okay, we're good. <laughs> we can inject all the bases at least, but again, that was a big investment for Dark and... This also means that the follow-up push, um, the 3 cc 2 one one the medevac push, the medevac timing from Oliveira, is going to hit like a truck. Usually, we would have an abundance of links and queens to defend, but now, like, we're still recovering, we're still remaking everything. It's uh, going to be a really tough moment for Dark. Here we go. Third base now being taken. We're building up that Hellion count. Um, so, I do like this a lot from Oliveira. Because he knows how much damage he dealt, because he knows he reset the queen count... It isn't just a two-on-one medevac push. We kept the reactor on the factory. We're making Hellions. We have an armory on the way instead. It's a Hellbat push. So again, because of this, it means that, um, again, the, the overall timing has been delayed a little bit because we weren't reactoring out the, the medevacs. But with these with these Hellions, with these Hellbats, this is gonna be a tough hold for Dark. How much do we have to defend? Seven Queens, 19 Lings. No Bailing Nest, the Queens are being brought forward. Do we have enough though? Concave is looking good. Every single queen is brought forward here to the front lines. Stim is done. We dive on the queens. There we go. Two queens are going to go down instantly. We get a third queen. GG gets called. It's far too much. And Oliveira will tie up the series one to one. GG. Oh my god. GG. Well played. Whew. Oliveira, of course, having a phenom phenomenal start to that game. Just got to make sure we don't get left behind. There we go. <laughs> Having an amazing start. The Reapers, they really set up for the success of the Hellbat push. Because so many queens died, that's why Dark was woefully underprepared. Um, because he had to make fresh queens, because he just had to inject, no transfuse. Zero transfuse available. The link, the link count was much lower than normal as well because of the mineral investment into all those queens. Like, it was all just set up there. For that eventual kill move and again Oliveira having the foresight to know hey if i just keep the reactor on the factory i can go for a hellbat push instead and i know that i can kill dark here just because of how ahead i am and just like that we go into the ace match let's go Ooh. here we go the Reapers. <laughs> I mean, it was, on the one hand, it was the Reaper control. On the other hand, it was Dark being greedy. Dark, he scouted, by the way. He scouted the two racks opener. He still went for the fast third. So, 
On the one hand, yes, it was Oliveira's Reapers getting out of control, but on the other hand, it was also Dark being greedy because it is known that against these two racks Reaper openers, they are designed to punish your faster third base, and you have to respect that. You have to delay your third, get faster link speed instead, stay in gas, and Dark didn't respect it. He was being greedy in that last game, and that's why I think snowballed out of control, and here we go. We're getting into game number three and spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Alkione. We have the South Korean Zerg player representing Dragon Kaizi Gaming. It is Dark. And spawning in the top right-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the Chinese Terran. We have the reigning world champion also representing Dragon Kaizi Gaming. It is Oliveira. Remember that last game, Dark, he committed everything he could just to, just to make sure he didn't he wasn't forced to cancel that third. And maybe at the, at the end of the day, it would have been worth canceling the third base. Like, it was, <laughs> uh, he lost four queens uh, in the defense. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> They're also designed to inflict, inflict psychological terror. True, true. The psychological warfare is real. Ugh. And now we're settling into that next game. And this could still go either way. Remember, earlier this week, earlier uh, on Monday, Oliveira did defeat Bjorn. He's already done it before. Can he do it again? Or can Dark get his revenge? Personally, what I love, I love that we have an ace match. I, I, that's, that's, that's all I wanted. I wanted this to go all the way to game three. I wanted to get as much out of these two players as we could. And so far, it hasn't disappointed. But what I will say is that in this series, we have yet to enter the mid game. In game one, if you remember, Dark went for a Ling Queen Night Assault in. In game two, Oliveira kind of won the game with his first Reapers and then with the follow-up Hellbat push. We have yet to really sink our teeth into three base saturation. That hasn't happened yet this series and I want it. And Alkyone is a good map for it. This is one of the larger maps in the map pool. Uh, very easy to establish yourself on three, four, and even five bases. Uh, very defendable because of all these ramps, ramps, because of all these choke points, because of the longer rush distance by ground. If we wanted a mid game, if we wanted a late game, this is the map to do it on. Also, I apologize if there's some background noise. Um, there's uh, our neighbors are mowing the lawn. Well, they, they're, I say mowing though, they're using the Whipper Sniffer at the moment, so I apologize if um, there's some that does come through the mic. Oh. Otherwise, oh my. Okay, we're good. <laughs> for, I got scared for a minute. Uh, we are going for another 3cc opener. It's going to be a 3cc into Starport. This time, no 2 racks Reaper. This time, Oliver is just going to be chilling out here, getting into an economic setup. Um, with the positioning of this Rax, it's looking like an add-on swap, looking like we should be seeing a tech lab and getting into Banshees, but we'll see if that's going to be the case um, as a tech lab is on the way. Likewise, across the map, we do have Oliveira just going to be dipping into those bases. Again, he's trying to get a read on the gases, on the droning. Dark is one to go for a Roach Rush or a Link Queen Nidus all in, as we've already seen this series. Speaking of, we're not getting a we're not getting a long game. <laughs> I, we just brought up the Link Queen Night Assault in. That is a very fast lair on the way. Three minute thirty five lair timing. Ay ay ay. And um, if we stay on two gases, this is going to be a Nidus and another Link Queen all in or Link Queen Night Assault in. We do check saturation, but seeing nothing at the third base this early on isn't a tell. We need to see more than this. We need to get into the main. Ay, ay, ay. Likewise, this is also a good way to try to punish or take advantage of a player that's going into an economic opener. We do see Oliveira fanning out his Marines. Designed to shut down Overlord Scouts. Hellion still threatening that third base. We do see saturation, but the lair is going to finish. We have been droning. We did saturate that third intentionally, so... And there it is. There's that Nidus Worm on the way. Just like game one. And Oliveira is in the dark. Still has no idea what's going on. Rotating around with his Hellions. Still hasn't gone into the natural or the main base. Spores are on the way. Now what's interesting here is that Dark is droning more than last game. He's actually saturating this third. Like he's he's actually droning here. Not investing as hard into Lings, but that's still a lot of Lings. And still seven Queens here 
on the front lines. There we go. There we go. Now we're hammering down that, that Linky. <laughs> 26 more links in production. We have an Overlord poised to go into the main base. Ooh. The Marines that were here earlier, no longer. They did move out of position. Uh-oh. And we're going for that main base. Nidus is on the way, and Oliver, he doesn't see! Not like this! He doesn't see what's going on. He checks the third, sees the saturation. Lings are here at the front door. They do bust in! They bust into the natural race. Hellions are racing back home. Meanwhile, the Nidus in the main base will complete as well. The tank! No, not like this. The tank gets caught out of position as well. It gets surrounded. It gets shut down without the tank. How do we defend? We do have Hellions, but that's what the Queens are for. Not like this. We have detection as well. Banshee is not going to be enough. As we get on top of the Raxes, Lings bypassing those Hellions once again. Really careful control here from Dark. He cannot lose these Lings. He cannot throw them away against the Hellions. As the production is being camped, another tank is on the way. And the tank does siege. A big moment. Oliveira, he's going to be able to protect his, his production at least. But the main base uh, is not going to be mining. We dive on top of the tank. No, he gets exposed. The tank. Oh my god, it's barely going to survive. The repair. We barely repair the tank in time. We knight us onto the low ground instead. Oh, but the knight us will go down. The queen gets trapped. And Oliveira, he is holding, he's preserving his marine, sorry, his SCV count. He protects his production. He will eventually regain control of his main base, and Dark is running. Dark is running behind this. Looks like he recognizes that he probably cannot end the game. But he has done a lot of damage. As the tanks are slowly leapfrogging forward, and Dark has to be careful to lose his queens. We're committing. Uh oh, we shouldn't though. The links get cleaned up, and now we dive on top of the queens as well. Dark losing a little bit there towards the end, but he did save most of his queens as they did escape. And Oliveira regains control of his main base. He has his third in position. Oliveira is in a good economic position as well. Like he's down six SCVs. He's down six workers, and we have mules. So really, he's not looking too bad. That was close. <laughs> I'll be honest. A lot of this came down to the tank. Remember that tank that went down deep into the red and barely survived because of the repair? Without that, I think Dark breaks him. I think Dark breaks his position and he gets on top of the production. Um, that was a pretty big moment. <laughs> that was a pretty clutch clutch repair. Uh, outside of that, Oliver is now going for a big counterattack. And what do we have to work with? We have Stim 1-1 as well. Oliver has a pretty terrifying army. And Dark back at home. Roaches are on the way. 1-1 one, one just now starting. He does have a high queen count. And Roaches, they do pop out just in time. With this Roach count, we should be okay. No Ravages, though. Bear that in mind. As Dark is in trouble. Here we go. The Roaches, they collapse on this position. They're getting on top of the tanks. There we go. The first tank is going to go down. Uh, the Marines, they clean up some of these queens. But the second tank should fall as well. The Marines, they put in a lot of work, though. <laughs> These 1-1 one, one Marines going to town here. They clean up the Roaches. They get on top of the Queens once again. No Transfuse. Oh, my God. And they will chase us all the way back to the natural. Reinforcements should be enough to hold on. How many Queens just died? 12. 12 Queens went down. Bearing in mind that most of them did escape the main... That was insane. <laughs> so even though Dark does protect his base, even though he deflects the army, that was a good trade. What did we really what did Oliveira really lose there? He lost two tanks in the attack and a handful of Marines. Like that was again an efficient trade for the Terran. And now we're looking to push back in. Now, as the Roach Count is getting higher and higher, Dark he's stabilizing. He's establishing himself here. Thankfully, Oliveira is not all in. He's getting more Raxes up and running. Clearing a creep. It's just going to be being as efficient as possible, maintaining his marine count here, getting the hell out of there. And the game is going to be stabilizing. Ooh, game is going to be stabilizing. I still want to give the edge to Oliveira. Um, he's working on 2-2. He's working on a 4-CC. I mentioned before that trying to break a defending Terran player here at their third and even their fourth base is quite a, a difficult thing to do on this, on this map. And we're going for a split push. Double drop towards the main. Double drop here at the center of the map. We're going to be clearing up some creep. 
Dark going to be relying on Roaches and Ravagers. I love that we have Tunneling Claws and Burrow on the way for Dark. Looking to counterattack, looking to harass. Again, Tunneling Claws is a way for Dark to come back and for him to get some economic damage done. Back at home, no turrets. There is a sensor tower on the way, but we don't have a safety turret set up here from Oliveira. Uh, getting ready for his push. We have five Infestors on the way as well. Infestors are a great way here to support a Roach Ravager army. Roach Ravager lacks splash damage. Lacks AoE. <gasps> no! Oh my god. But again, Fungal Growths do help with that. They help lock down the Bio army. And here come those... Oh, we're actually using the Tulling Claw Roaches to scout. Okay. We're going to be fanning them out. Trying to get a read on the army location. Testing the waters. Ooh, it does get spotted. Ke oh my, keen eyes, Poppy. Even before the turret finishes. That was actually impressive. That was crazy. <laughs> Oliveira does take down one of those roaches. Tower, the turret just now finishes after that. And now we're moving out. Oh, but we have infestors on the way. Five of them ready. Oliveira, he has to be careful. He has to pre-split. Up oh, the buggles. There's some decent fungals on the army. Big bars as well. They do graze some of those marines, but the tanks are in position and we're pushing on forward. Oh, they are not really being slowed down. We need another big fungal. Miles, they do force the split. They do slow down the army, at least for a moment. But the tanks are getting even closer here and Dark is being forced further and further back into his bases. Waiting for his moment. Waiting to try to push out, try to break free. Fungal, once again, not quite connecting, and it looks like, yeah, Dark has to give up on this base. Hatchery is going to go down. Scan reveals the army. Does get eyes on all those infestors. From here, we don't have to commit. We are running out of Marine Marauder, so I feel like we have to retreat from here, and yeah, we're, we're backing up. <laughs> A wise choice out of Oliveira. Gets a kill on the base, and just backs the hell off. One of the Marauders. As we're going to be able to focus down a gas guys or a drone as well. I, we're going to be able to trade a bit of a miss rally here, here for this army. But again, that was a good moment from Oliveira. Really mature decision as well to retreat after killing the base. Otherwise, he would have been cleaned up 100%. So he backs off, takes his win, gets his fourth base up and running. And now Oliveira, he is uh, far more cemented here in how ahead he is economically. He's up in workers, um, up in bases. Dark, he's only on three hatcheries. He's triple expanding right now to try to get a fourth base. Dark in a desperate position. Now, if Oliveira gives him time, then Dark will be able to stabilize once some of these bases get up and running. Uh, but Oliveira, oh, he's going for a double drop. He's going to catch this hatchery, and he's also going for a push towards the left-hand side. Dark, he's going to have a hard time holding onto these bases. Yeah, we go for the stim, and this base is going to be canceled. Northern base gets cancelled. Here comes a double drop towards the south. And this southern base should be cancelled as well. Even if Dark loses two of these bases, though, he will at least establish this center base. He will get a fourth. Not a fifth, though. As the main army is pushing forward. Yeah, it's going to be a cancel here towards the south. Tanks are getting in position. Piles. Ooh. They graze the tank, but they don't, get, they don't bring it down. And where are the infestors? Uh, big snipes going off. And how good are the fungal growths? Not too bad. Uh, it does graze the right-hand side, but one fungal is not enough. Uh, 14 workers are going down, and Oliveira, he's snowballing out of control. EMP does miss, but I don't think he even needs it. Yeah, there's just not enough on the ground. Not enough here from Dark. At the same time, the drop on the right-hand side is still getting more damage done. 15 drones go down. EMP does connect. Up. Thestors are falling. Oliveira, he's running out of steam, but he killed a base, and once again, Dark is stuck on three bases. He did establish the center base, that's true, but this was meant to be his fourth, not his third. It's Dark, he's still stuck on a three-base economy. He's trying to get into, um, I imagine, Hydra Lurker Viper, but uh, it's too little too late for that. Oliveira, he's getting out of control, pushing on forward. 
Not enough energy for any more fungals. We have some blinding clouds. They do cover the tanks. Another fungal from behind as well. Dark, can he clean this up? Up. He barely will. He barely comes in from behind, takes down the tanks. Oh my god. <laughs> A big clean up here from Dark. The MVP there, the the uh the blinding clouds, they covered so many of those tanks. And Dark desperately needs a base. He needs a hatchery. He's triple expanding for a second time. He needs one of these bases up and running. Meanwhile, Oliver, he's getting a fifth. He's getting a fifth base. He's up two bases compared to the Zerg. Now, that was an expensive loss for Oliver, so it's going to take him a little bit here to rebuild his ghosts and rebuild his tanks. So, Dark has some breathing room. He does have the room he needs to get some of these bases. But it's not just about the base count, obviously. It's also about the creep spread as well. The creep, it's barely connecting the bases. And because of that, we have very limited vision on the map. It means that moves like this go unscouted. And Oliveira, he just walks into the mineral line. He doesn't even care. Denies the gold. The gold would be a good way to come back in this game. But again, Dark, he just has no map vision. He has very limited time to react to any kind of pressure from his opponent. Whether it's drop play or run buys. He needs to try to just preemptively be in position. And Oliveira behind this. He's building up that ghost count once again. We're up to 10 ghosts, 3 tanks. Liberator range on the way. Liberator production. Do we have a lurker den? We do not. Just a Hydra Roach, Roach Hydra Viper Infester at this point. Not the most... It's a, it's a quite expensive army. Um, losing Hydras is a pretty big blow to your gas. That's what Dark is relying on. And here we go, Oliver. He's getting in position. Oof. One tank does go down. Ah, uh, but we're within range of the base. We're within range of the mineral line. The Infester! No! It does get a fungal off on the Marines. We have another Infester coming in. And there just isn't enough to support this tank, by the way. Where are the Marines? We need a, str a stronger bio presence here. Dark, he holds, but he loses 13 workers. Uh, this drop here. We have a mine drop here towards the south. We have a drop here towards the north. And Dark, he's being pulled apart. He may have held against the main push, but he's being pulled apart by the harass. Ay, ay, ay. The mine drop going ham. This marine drop as well. At the same time, we're breaking on through. Ah, oh, we do catch maybe a liberator. The Widow Mine's barely not resetting. We do have those Vipers. We do have some spell casters here for Dark. We just lost 20 workers. And this hatchery, it's getting lower and lower. Oh, Infestor does get caught. We are down to one Infestor left. These are the only spell casters. One Infestor and two Vipers. Snipe's going to be going off. We can sign whatever we want. Oh! There is potential for a Fungal. We are the EMP! <laughs> the Nero with the counter EMP, but it's it's not going to be enough at this point. It is just not enough. Ay, ay, ay. Cute moves here from Dark. You love to see it, but uh, alas, Oliveira, he's still breaking on through. Uh, he's having a hard time spending his bank. Oliveira does have a lot of minerals and gas. Production failing him a little bit, but it's just too much. GG gets called. The snipes go up, and Oliveira will take it. Game number three, taking the series two to one. GG. GG, well played. Twice now this week, Oliveira has taken down Dark in a best of three in the ace match. GG, congratulations. Meanwhile, a big shout out to Vindic Miguelito. <laughs> big shout out to Vindicta. Thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. Hope you had a great time. Hope you enjoyed yourself. And um, hope you're doing well, Bobby. Hope you're doing well in your IRL endeavors. Thank you. Thank you for the raid. For those that are tuning in, we are here in the semifinals of the KSL. And we just wrapped up with the lower semis. And it looks like, do we have the upper semifinals ready for us? Um, I think it's currently underway. Let me just double check. Um, ooh, actually, I believe Classic versus Shin is still ongoing. So... Yeah, the series is still underway here in the upper quarterfinals. 
And yeah, GG, well, well played. Really solid series here out of Oliveira. Um, again, basically, Dark was in a really difficult position after the failed Link Queen Knight is all in. I mean, it was an all in, right? So basically, from the moment when Oliveira held that, he was in a commanding position. Uh, even in his counterattack, if you remember, he killed 12 queens. He killed 12 queens in his counterattack. Did so well for himself, just keeping Dark behind and we saw Oliveira just completely pull Dark apart time and time again sniping base after base after base um and Dark was just in a really difficult position from I mean from the failed all-in was trying to play catch up the entire time uh, I don't think Dark was ever ahead economically that game outside of the early game I don't think he was ever able to take an economic lead he always had limited larva I see some people in the chat talking about Banelings um Banelings would not have worked there for one reason for one simple reason and that is um because Dark was losing bases from a from a very early stage, what's important about that is limited larva. Because that we needed something that was more cost efficient larva wise, and Ling Bane, we didn't we just didn't have the production for it. We didn't Dark didn't have the production for Ling Bane to support his army just because he was losing base after base after base. It was crazy that at a time Oliveira had five CCs compared to three hatcheries of Dark. Like it was crazy, just like the economic blow. Um, so just like just because of what he had available like it was like doomed if you do doomed if you don't sort of thing like there was there was no good answer for dark in that position just because of the early game really um it was just yeah really really difficult and with that Oliveira did snowball out of control did take it in the end and oh we may have another semi-finals oh almost never mind <laughs> never mind so it looks like um Shin versus Classic still ongoing. We can take this moment to have a look at the bracket and to pay out those predictions.